Hi! So, I got something fun here. Um, I got a tabletop RPG unboxing. This is one of, I think, three starter sets for Sword World 2.5 edition. <clears throat> so, Sword World is a Japanese RPG. Um, it was originally created, um, I can't remember when, in the 80, late 80s, early 90s, somewhere in there. And it was created as sort of a Japanese Dungeons & Dragons. Um, it was designed to use a simple 2D6 system because polyhedral dice were very hard to come by at the time in Japan. And it's kind of become <clears throat> sort of a mainstay of Japanese RPGs. Um, now, I will confess, I can't read Japanese, although I've translated some of it, and I can read a little bit, like I can read the kana here, it says Sword World, right, uh, start box, uh, start set, sorry. Um, so I can read like tiny little bits of the Japanese. Um, however, I also have Sword World 2.0 in Korean, <laughs> which I'm a little better at reading <clears throat> and working on learning. Um, so, but that's not why I want to show this box. I want to show it because there is a ton of material packed into a tiny, tiny box. And you have everything you need to run, I think it's three adventures in what, a like seven and a half by five and a half inch box. <clears throat> so let's take a look. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned there are, this is one of three starter sets that I know of. Um, this one roughly translates to Labyrinth of the Stars. Um, the other one that I saw was like an aquatic temple focused one. And the third one, I, I know nothing. All right. So let's take a look. <clears throat> so here we have our... First manual. This is our start. What is it? Start book. So this is sort of your introduction. What is an RPG? What's in the box? Right? How tokens work, positioning. It's all sort of a uh, idiot's guide to RPGs. Well, not an idiot's guide, but an intro. Um, it also has a small little like solo play scenario where it kind of guides you through the rules. So you play as the one fighter character and you got to dig out that fighter's sheets. And basically it says, oh, you're sneaking up to the front entrance. Make a stealth check. Um, if you failed, you get attacked by this goblin. If you succeeded, you get the jump on him kind of thing, right? And it's a very simple how to play manual with a nice little starter reference sheet. Uh, this is your damage matrix. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool little system. Um, one thing that's neat about this system is it uses zoned combat. Um, if you watch Dungeon Craft and you're familiar with his ultimate dungeon terrain, uh, this will be familiar with to you. So basically, they lay it out kind of like a JRPG battle line, right? You have the, uh... Melee area, the player's back area, and the enemy's back area, right? Basically engaged, far away, far away. Um, and you can basically be start in either of these zones, and then you can traverse on your turn. And it's, it's zoned combat, just in a different kind of layout. Um, here, this is our main rule book. So this kind of takes what was in the start book, and it shows you it in more detail. Right, anatomy of a character sheet, different items. I believe this is skills. Here's your basic dice mechanic flow chart. Uh, magic, how it works, how to cast spells. I believe this is your armor check penalties. All right, uh, what's that? That's a spell card, I believe. I translated this quite some time ago. Here's the world. Uh, one thing that's interesting about Sword World 2.5 
is it uses a different world from first edition and 2.0. Um, <clears throat> first edition and 2.0 used a setting that was actually used in several anime. Um, if you're familiar with the anime's Lotus War or Rune Soldier or Legend of Cristania, those all took place in the original Sword World campaign setting. And this one uses a whole a whole new world with some new player character races and options. Alright, da, 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 da. so that's your main rule book. Here we have scenario book one. So this is the first adventure. Okay. And it's, you know, adventure layout, da da da. Flow charts, and it's just it's the adventure. Has the uh, dungeon tiles that you use. Oh, sorry. Has the different dungeon tiles that you can use. Um, and how to... Basically describes how to run an adventure. And it gives you the layout of your first adventure. Uh, final battles, yada yada. Um, yeah. And it has another battle grid. I kind of like how they have the... Uh, the battle grid or the zones on multiple books. For different terrain types. <clears throat> right, here's another battle grid. So no matter which scenario book you're using, <laughs> uh, you'll have a battle grid you can use. Alright, uh, here's scenario book two. So this is second adventure. It's notably thinner than the others. Um, this one uses more involved dungeon tiles, so they explain the dungeon tiles in a bit more detail. Sorry, in a bit more detail. And yeah. Monsters. Cool stuff. Alright, and scenario book three. So the third adventure. And so these are all basically a three adventure mini campaign about this labyrinth of the stars. Okay. <clears throat> Comes with tons of stuff. So here's our books. Let's tie those up a smidge. Next, it comes with a bunch of dry erase markers with erasers for everybody for everybody let's see if they work still They've, this has been sitting for almost a year oh as good as new even after sitting for a year cool all right now we have cards and tiles so let's organize some of this keep it down all right so these are our monster cards and they're pretty cool. Has a nice graphic of the monster. I can't remember what this is. I don't remember if that's the challenge level or the XP you get for killing them. I don't remember. But all the info you need, all on one card. And they've got that for different monsters. All right. Uh, this is an original. And what are these guys? This is a... Uh... Rudrun? I don't know what that translates to. Rudorun. I don't know. It's some sort of phonetic. <laughs> Alright. Gargoyles. Gargoyles. Oh, I like how they have multiple cards. So you can be like, You see two gargoyles! But ump! And then you just drop them on the table, and they know that there are two gargoyles. Right, which you could also use for zoned combat. <clears throat> uh, various constructs. This guy, what is he? He is a Zadi? I don't know what that is. Zadi. Something along those lines. My Japanese is not great. <laughs> Little dude in a vat. What is that? Home. Home and... Oh, homunculus. Homunculus proto. Like prototype homunculus, I guess. Which makes me want to play this adventure. Test two people. <laughs> right. Now we got some skeletons. Yeah. Skeleton archers. Skeleton archers. Lynxes. Ch -ch -ch -ch. What's that? Gray, oh, gray lynx. Okay, it's a gray lynx. 
That is some gnarly art. I like the art on these. They're cool. What is that? Res, uh, res, some kind of ogre. Yeah, it's ogre. Resa? Resa ogre? Lesser ogre. A lesser ogre. Okay. <laughs> okay. What do we got here? I wonder if this is the greater ogre. Borugu Hebiamu. Hebiamu. I don't know. <laughs> but he's cool looking. Big dude. Big monster dude with shield. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Spell cards. Spell cards. Um, really not a value if you don't read the Japanese, but having translated a few of them, they have all you need. Damage matrices for the cards. And it's priest and wizard spells. Uh, little scenario cards, right, with little story bumpers. This is kind of like if you were watching a movie, this would be the little text crawl at the beginning. Again, something you can just throw in front of your players. All right. Just little visual handouts, and they make them small, but high quality, so you can bring all that to your table. Alright. So there's the cards. <clears throat> what else do we got here? We've got... Character posters. Well, poster pages. So, these are... What are they? I believe they're character bios. Oh, it's like a guild sheet for the character, but part of an adventurer's guild, I believe. Yeah, guild. So I believe they're bios of the characters. Right? This is your your pre-generated character's backstory and background and such. I could be wrong. I haven't translated that. And there's our human fighter. Alright. His name is his name is Aldo. Right. Um, we got Sven. He's a furry. I'm not a fan because he is a furry. Um, but you know, they exist. They're a thing. And we got the dwarf. Pretty typical dwarf. Done with his big old hammer. What's his name? Dog. Dog the dwarf. <laughs> or Dogu the dwarf. And your elf wizard. Or maybe cleric. I don't know. What's her name? Fiana. Pretty standard. And that is your pre-generated adventuring party. Okay, what else do we got? Oh, we got some warning tape. So this is sort of a GM's cheat sheet for the dungeons. This is a really high quality print. Like it's stiff card on like glossy paper. It's really nice. The production value on this is phenomenal, which is kind of why I'm showing it to you. It's just because of the production value and just the general value of all you get in the box. Everybody gets their own dice. I mean, they're pretty bog standard cheapo dice. I mean, only slightly above like the crap you could get at a dollar store. But the fact that they threw in a set of dice for everybody and color coded them, I just think is just, it's a nice little extra touch. Okay, moving on. So, character sheets. And we've got them at different levels. So this is her level 3 character card. All right. Now obviously you couldn't use these for an extended campaign. You'd use an actual more traditional character sheet. But for just a, a 3 level mini campaign that's in this box, well, that's perfect. That's perfect. Here's this dog's level 2 sheet. Da -da -da -da. And these are cool, because they actually match up to the equipment cards. So here's an equipment card. Let's see. It's the broadsword. It's the broadsword. Okay. 
and it's kind of graphic. It attaches to your character sheet and it becomes an extra stat line, <clears throat> which I think is kind of neato. Um, let's, let's just go through these character sheets. There's not much to see, HP, MP. I like that it uses magic points and not Vancy and magic like D&D. &D. Spells per day and spell slots. I've never been a fan of that stuff. Alright. These are all his attributes. Pretty cool. Alright. Now, what have we got here? Level 2. I'm not sure what's the deal with this. I'd have to read it in more detail. What do we got there? Healing uh, potion. Oh, that's just gear. He's got a oh healing potion. <laughs> I thought it said hearing potion. <laughs> I'm a dummy. All right. So there's his potions. Mm -hmm. Same thing. I wonder how you would actually use these. Whether you'd use it like supplement them and add your level two sheets or your level three sheet on top of your level two sheet. I don't know. I think it's kind of interesting that everybody starts at level 2. I don't see level 1 sheets for anybody. Unless you would use maybe your uh, this card for your level 1. I don't know. Um, I love this. Again, thoughtful production value. All this is is just a blank card. It's white. It's glossy. It's a note card for your GM. All right? You need to track hit points. Goblin, 17 out of 17 HP, All right? You need to track initiative. It's just, it's eminently useful, right? There was a lot of forethought into packing this box, and I think that's wonderful. And I tell you, if I create a boxed starter set for a game I develop, this will be at least as far as the physical product is concerned, my primary model. Because I think it's just, it's great for the traveling game master. It's great for the traveling player. It's great for small groups when you don't have a ton of space, right? Which is exactly what I'm dealing with in Korea, you know? When you're not in a, a temporary lockdown because COVID flares, you don't usually game at people's houses because people live in tiny little apartments. And you got to go to cafes and, you know, board game uh, clubs and stuff. And it's nice to have something that you can just carry around easily. All right? And these are just weapons, items, healing herbs. I don't know what all this is. Potions. Right? Gargoyle hand. Etc. Right? It's just, it's so well put together, and they pack so much into this tiny little box, right? Like, like, literally, if I were to compare this to some other physical artifact, it's basically three, maybe four DVD or, like, video game boxes stacked on top of each other. And that is your whole game for at least three sessions, right? Punch cards, character tokens, monster tokens, monster tokens, dungeon tiles. Oh, well that's no fun. It fell out. Let's put that back on the box so it doesn't fall all over the place. Get in there. Get, okay. All right. Magic circle. All right. It's double sided. Like just so much inside. I'm not sure what these are about, but I'm curious. They're obviously some kind of counter. Right? What's it say? I don't know. Right? Just cool. Just a cool little thing. You know, it's like, oh, you get to here. You go inside. Here. You see what's inside. Um... These are very small, by the way. Like, it's definitely not meant to be a tactical battle grid. It's more of an exploration map. 
and then you just put your tokens to show generally where you are. And I'm down with that, because, you know, as I showed you before, it uses the zone combat. And it provides you just with a nice visual. No need for, like, a serious grid. Although, some grid here. You know, got some friggin' Yetis or Wendigo or something going on here. Just, just a beautiful box, you know? Just a lot going on in here. I really wish I had the time and the inclination to learn Japanese, to learn to play this, uh, and use this box, but it's just, it's just not practical for me to do so. Especially when I have another language that I really should be learning because it actually will, val will benefit me in my day-to-day, -day, that being Korean, as I live in Korea. Um, but yeah, so that is Sword World 2.5 Starter Set, Labyrinth of the Stars. Um, that Labyrinth of the Stars title is just a, a Google translation, so don't take it as a hard translate or a hard translation or a perfect translation. But it's cool. Uh, let's take a quick look at the back, right? So this shows the contents, right? And it's nothing spectacular, but yeah. Um, the full set of Sword World is a three book set. Um, the 2.5 edition and the 2.0 edition have the same three books, although the covers are different. Um, I have the Japanese 2.5 edition books and the Korean 2.0 simply because 2.5 edition has not been translated to Korean. But we can take a look at the other boxes or other books since we're talking Sword World. All right, so they divide them into three rule books, and each rule book kind of steps up the complexity. Um, the closest uh, analog I can think of is the old basic expert D&D boxes, you know, where you got the basic box and that took you to level, I don't remember, five, maybe. Then you had to have the expert box to take it up to level, I don't know, 10 or whatever, right? Um, and this is similar. So this is rule book one, the Japanese version, and these are printed by, I believe, Kodansha? Kodokawa? Uh, Kodokawa, who print manga. So it's printed like a manga. It has the same form factor, same page size, same print quality as a manga. I really like the small form factor, right? I just love the idea of packing everything you need into a small book. Like, this is, this is a tiny, tiny book, at least page size wise. Like I think it's like probably an A6 page or pretty close to it. What is that? 105 by uh, 105 by 150 centimeters. So yeah, just like slightly bigger than A6. But it has everything you need to get started. Right? Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of flash and show. It's not necessarily a very good reference book, right? Unless you bookmark things, doesn't really lay flat, which is a bit of a bummer. And there's not a ton of art, but as a, I can take my game with me in my pocket, you know, grab this, grab this, couple character sheets in the back and you're off to the races if you're running an intro campaign, right? Uh-huh. What else we got in this book? Da, da, da. Monsters. So the monster section does have some nice art. All right, what do we got here? What is it? Nazu... Nazuraku? I don't know. Some kind of fucking Cthulhu horror. Uh, oh. What is it? Erebiria. I don't know. Monsters. Just monsters. There's that same construct that we had the card for. 
It looks like something out of Nier Automata. By the way, if you've never played Nier Automata, do. Um, yeah. Monsters. And I'm going to skip kind of the Japanese part very quickly because my Japanese is, is pretty low. And then the rest is just... If you can't read Japanese, it's not much use to you other than just as a neat artifact. Pretty low on the art, but, you know, when they throw it in there, it's really nice. It's good art. You know, it looks like a manga. If you're into manga. <laughs> right? And there are... More. Here's book two, rule book two. Same size, same form factor. Right? Uh, I think this is character class or skills, maybe spell information. Oh, let's find that picture. There's some uh, Ashido. Some kind of goblin. All right. All right. And they've got character sheets. And I love the size of these character sheets. I just like small books, you know? Like my campaign journal is this tiny little guy, right? I like small books. They they carry easy. <laughs> and there's your character sheet. You know? You can photocopy it onto a, a standard letter or A6 page and do like three sheets on one paper. <laughs> what do we got going on here? And then... Stones. More monsters. More monsters. I assume they're leveled up to be threats to the new levels available in this book. Right? Oh, I saw a picture. What was it? Oh. Well, that's a cool pick. I like that. What is that? Runzemaze. Runzemaze. Uh, I don't know. My Japanese is really bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Add in the back for... I believe that's for a Sword World 2.5 uh, replay. Replays are a cool concept. It's basically a, a thing that was popular in Japanese role-playing games. Is they would publish what they call replays. And they're kind of similar to what we have now with, like, stream campaigns, like uh, Critical Role and that kind of thing. Um, where they'll, they would write out the game as a script. Um, sometimes they would write it out in character. Sometimes they would write it out describing what happened actually at the game table. Um, this right here is a Sword World 2.5 replay. Um, called Train Travelers, and it's a adventure that took place, well, on a train. And I, uh, I slogged through the introduction, <laughs> um, via Google Translate and my limited Japanese, and it's kind of cool. The, the, the writer, he basically goes on about how he was playing D&D, &D, right, and found Sword World, and... I can't remember the details, it was a while ago. But this basically just details a campaign, and it's written like a script. Right? Full of art. And that's kind of... I like Sword World. I want to know what other people are doing in Sword World. And so you read it, almost like a novel. They add some art of the characters. And they basically make a book of their campaign. Which I think is a pretty cool concept. All right, so that is the Japanese stuff. I'll give you a quick look at rule book three. Um, that is, you know, that's for another time when we talk about Goblin Slayer. Um, <laughs> and here is rule book three. All right, and it's similar, right? It has new rules, new magic. New monsters, new classes, I think it might have some new races, higher level classes, yada yada. Right? And that's the whole game, more or less. 
Um, there are some magazines, right? Uh, similar to like uh, Dungeon Magazine or Dragon Magazine or other role playing game magazines. Um, so this magazine is called Game Mastery. And it just has various TRPG stuff. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'll do an, a, a full flip through of this magazine. But it's got adventures for different systems. I believe this is put out... Yeah, it's put out by Group SNE. They're the creators of Sword World. Uh, they also created, I believe, yeah, the Goblin Slayer TRPG based on the anime. Um, which is awesome. The anime is awesome. I don't know about the, the book, the RPG. I have it, but it's Japanese, so I haven't read it. <laughs> but we'll do another... If people like this, we'll do kind of a dive on this one. And last, because this video is getting long, <laughs> I will show you the Korean books for Sword World, or at least book one, because my books two and three are still in the cellophane. So there's... 2.0 books one two three one thing you'll notice is that these are published in korean manga and light novel size which are not the same as japanese manga size <laughs> right so we'll compare it to a sword world man uh, a japanese manual and it's right that much size difference which i <sighs> I don't hate, right? It's still a nice compact form factor. This would probably be equivalent to like a, a digest sized book back in North America. Um, you know, probably about close to the same form factor as say your Savage Worlds Explorer edition, right? I do like the smaller Japanese form factor better. Um, and the paper also feels nicer. This just feels like Western novel paper, but it's, Similar. It's got a little scenario in it. Um, I'll do a deeper dive on this in another video. Um, just because this is getting so long. And the focus of this was really the unboxing of this guy. Right? So, I'm going to call it there. If you like that, um, let me know. Alright. I will catch y'all later.